In part two of our Cotswold guide, we'll visit more stunning villages, a country hunting lodge, the Cotswold Motor Museum, the Folly Tower at Broadway, enjoy dinner at the oldest pub in England, and much, much more, so stick with us. Wharton on the Water has been described as the little Venice of the Cotswolds. The Wind Rush River runs right through the village and numerous low bridges provide the crossings. Traditional Cotswolds cottages line the banks and most have been turned into tourist shops, cafes and restaurants as this is one of the most popular tourist spots in the region. There is plenty to see, eat and do including Bird World, a small bird zoo with a collection of penguins a model railway, perfumery and factory, and our highlight, the Cotswold Motor and Toy Museum. Tickets are £6.50 for adults and £4.75 for children, open seven days a week from 10am to 6pm. The museum has an interesting collection of cars and artefacts, highlighting the 20th century of the motor car. The star of the museum is Brum, a model car famous for its 1990s children's TV show. There are lots of interactive areas including a blacksmith's, a lovely recreation of a small country garage and finishing right up into the 80s with the collection. You'll spend an hour or more in this delightful museum. stopped and got a pasty. <laughs> uh, loads of different flavours in there actually, like traditional ones, so veggie ones, cheese and onion. Um, I've gone for a Thai chicken, and si has gone for a pork and apple, I think it was. I don't really know what Thai chicken means, but I guess <laughs> kind of curryish. So that's nice. If you fancy something other than a pasty, then there's plenty of choice from ice cream to cream teas and full-blown pub lunches. The Dial House looked particularly nice and would be great to sit outside in the summer. A few miles down the road from Bolton, and sometimes missed by visitors, are the Slaughters. The name of the village of Lower Slaughter stems from the Old English name for a wetland, Slough. 
this charming village sits beside the I stream and is less busy for tourism and doesn't have all the tourist shops. You come here for the peace and quiet and a lovely walk. It's possible to walk from Lower to Upper Slaughter along the river. It's about a 25 minute walk, but with the recent bad weather, today was too muddy. The Slaughter Mansion House is a stunning 17th century, four-star luxury country hotel, offering guests a slice of the quiet country life. The stream running through the village is crossed by two small bridges. All around you are the most perfect Cotswolds properties. And we found this to be our favorite location from all the places we visited on our trip. If you haven't seen part one of our journey, make sure you check that out at the end. Also help us by giving us a like and consider subscribing. The main attraction is a converted mill with original water wheel, selling craft type products and includes a cafe. A flour mill has stood on this location since the 10th century. This one built in the 19th century milled flour commercially until 1958. Now being slowly and sympathetically restored, you can go inside and find out about life as a miller. The village of Upper Slaughter is even quieter than Lower Slaughter. It sits on a hill above the stream that connects the two villages. The cottages are very pretty and walking down the hill to the river you can see a ford that normally you'd be able to drive across. However, due to the recent storms in the UK, the rivers have swelled and the current is too strong to allow cars to cross at this point. Slaughter is known as a double thankful village, as all the servicemen that were called up in World War I and II returned home safely. There were no fatalities. Morton in the Marsh is a small market town dating back a thousand years to the Saxon era. We only had time to drive through on our way to Stone the Wall at our next major stop. Morton has one of the main rail links to London, so if you didn't have a car and wanted to experience the Cotswolds on a day trip whilst visiting the capital, you can catch a service from Paddington Station direct to Morton and you'll be in the heart of the Cotswolds in an hour and a half. From here you can use local bus services to get around. 
The high street is lined with elegant 17th and 18th century buildings, among them the White Hart Royal, a former manor house in which King Charles I sheltered during the Civil War. Every Tuesday, Morton Inn Marsh hosts the largest open-air street market in the Cotswolds. So really typically around this area, you see a lot of these dry stone walls and they're made with this kind of honey-colored limestone um, rocks and super clever how they're built. There's no cement or anything holding them together. It's all just placed on top of each other in a certain way that creates this really strong standing wall. You see them all over the Cotswolds region and they're used to separate farmers' fields um, and keep animals in. Stow on the Wold is the highest of the Cotswold towns, standing tall on Stow Hill at a junction of several major roads. This made it a very important trade town centuries ago. At the height of the Cotswolds wool industry, the town was famous for its huge annual fairs, where as many as 20,000 sheep were sold at a time. The vast market square sadly now looks more like a car park. At one end stands the ancient cross, and at the other, the town stocks. So these are the uh, traditional stocks. So if you were bad in the town, maybe you'd stolen something, they'd bring you here and they'd uh, put your legs through or your arms through and tie you up and you'd stay in the stocks for a period of time to serve your penance. Shopping is pretty good here with plenty of antiques, craft and gift shops, along with a number of pubs. So behind me is the oldest pub in England, it's called the Porch House. Originally it was the Royalist, but it changed its name uh, a little while back. Um, it dates back to the 10th century, and we're actually going to be having dinner here tonight, so you'll see that a little bit later on. Inside the pub it is exactly as you'd want an old English pub to be, with a roaring fire, comfy chairs and a real rural charm. The small dining room gets booked up well in advance, so make sure you make a booking we saw many people turned away. It's also a hotel if you fancy staying here. Will started with homemade soup of the day, which was mushroom, and I had a duck liver orange pate with warm brioche. For mains, we both had the chicken Kiev balatine with tomato and thyme dressing. Total cost with drinks was 60 pounds. It was absolutely delicious. On our final stop of this trip, we headed for Broadway Tower, a few miles outside of Broadway Village, which is notably well worth a visit. The tower is within a 50-acre park and there's more to do here than meets the eye. There is ample parking with a ticket office and cafe, 
You can walk up to the tower for free, but a five pound fee is made if you want to go inside. The ticket also allows you to walk around the deer park or visit the nuclear bunker on the hill. We only had time to walk to the tower. As you approach the folly, you pass a plaque marking the spot where a World War II bomber on a training mission crashed on the 2nd of June 1943. Designed by the great 18th century landscape designer Capability Brown, Broadway Tower stands proud overlooking the stunning rolling hills of the Cotswolds. Work was carried out by the renowned architect James Wyatt and completed in 1798. Inside, the exhibits tell the story of its colourful past and you can climb onto the roof for wonderful views. from a very cold and blustery Broadway tower from the Memory Seekers. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our trip to the Cotswolds and we'll see you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe, but for now, happy travels.